let's hit on a few other quick things. Uh, rapamycin. Yeah. Uh, are you taking it? Uh, on and off. Um, yes. I, I'm taking six milligrams once a week. Mm -hmm. um, met, uh, metformin? Yeah. Daily when I remember. When you remember, yes. Well, Serena, I'm sure, is there to help out when she can. Uh, you've gone vegan. Have you always been vegan? No, I was uh, pseudo-Mediterranean about two years ago, and, uh, which I thought was healthy. Red wine, cheese. Uh, it was a great life. But unfortunately, I, I was losing my memory, uh, and I, I really wasn't that... I mean, I was about seven or eight years younger than my actual age, according to Inside Tracker, the testing company. Um, I met Serena Poon, who's here in the audience, who Peter's been referencing, I've been referencing. She's, a, among other things, a nutritionist, um, but also a longevity expert. And a lot of things I don't know she does. And one of those things is what to eat. Um, so she turned me on to veganism. Now, I would say I'm a struggling vegan. I still have butter and milk occasionally. I'll occasionally have some alcohol. Uh, but I do try to be plant-focused as much yes. as I can. And I do, it, it turns out I, I love plant stuff. I love hummus and baba ganoush and... All that stuff. So I, I don't just eat salads. Uh, but what, what surprised me when I switched to uh, listen to Serena is that I, I measure myself in many ways, as I think you all know. Uh, I went back another two years in my biological age, just in a couple of months after switching to that diet. So I've been convinced. Now, I think there are a lot of people who say, well, I've got to have my meat, I've got to have my alcohol. I would say just try to temper it, especially the alcohol. Yeah, my, my father used to say, pan, metron, on everything in moderation. Mm -hmm. Talk about mitochondria. I mean, the powerhouse, uh, uh, you know, the whole NMN, NAD complex, but um, the number of mitochondria fall off as we age and the efficiency of them. Mm -hmm. um, what's, that's one of the hallmarks of aging. Yeah, it is. Uh, so there are, there are about a dozen hallmarks now we keep adding on. And th these are really underlying causes of aging. Mitochondrial dysfunction is one of them. Um, though I think that epigenetic changes drive a lot of these, including mitochondrial effects, because when we reset the age of the cell, the mitochondria get rejuvenated, which is good news. Now, these power packs decline. NMN and boosters of NAD rejuvenate mitochondria, and that's been shown to be highly beneficial in animals and now in people. And so one of the things that you want to do is make sure that you're battery packs, your mitochondria stay healthy and numerous. And that's one of the reasons exercise and fasting are beneficial, is that your body boosts the mitochondria. And your fasting regime right now, is it, has it changed at all? Are you still yeah. one meal a day or are you? I, I try. I ate a little bit of lunch, as you saw. I, I really try, as I think, Serena I think you will tell ate you. A I, piece I of struggle. cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's really hard. I agree that just having one meal a day um, is a challenge. I think it's okay if you're not perfect. You, I try to skip breakfast. I try to skip lunch. I'm not always successful. But in general, my average day looks like most of my calories are eaten within a six-hour window. And so Do I you feel you're getting enough protein to keep your muscle mass? We've talked a lot about the importance of muscle mm. and uh, reversing sarcopenia as we age. Yeah, I do. So I think if you, if you don't pay attention to what you eat and you just eat lettuce leaves, you're not going to do it. But we're, Serena and I are very careful. We, we focus on legumes and we, we eat uh, those plants that have high protein content and nutrition. And that's the key. You need to educate yourself on what to eat, not just when to eat. Uh, I think I promoted uh, Lifespan more than any of my own books. It was just such a beautiful book. You're very kind. Uh, and I, I think it's important. It's waking people up to the possibility to give them hope uh, and to give them a, a mindset. Uh, you have another book you're working on. Right. When do we expect that? What's it going to be about? Uh, well, also congrats on, on your book, Life Force. It, Thank it's you. sold very well and I think deservedly so. There's, a, you, there's you a whole have, chapter have, in the book that Tony and I wrote about, about David. Yeah, well, thank you again for that. That was kind. And if you haven't read Life Force, well worth it. Uh, so, yeah, the book two is everything that you wanted to know that wasn't in Lifespan will be in this one. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking about calling it Lifespan 2. It's really a, a journey through... Second life. Through time. Yes. That's a good one. Yeah. A journey through time, looking at what makes us human, what are, what are in our, what's in our genetic makeup and our epigenetic makeup that we can learn from in how to live our lives through this tumultuous time where society is trying to not just kill us, but make us age rapidly. 
um, our lifestyles of sitting and eating and lack of exercise, stress, um, even social media is really bad. These are things that put the body in a state of complacency. And this book will be, in the same way Lifespan was the textbook, this will be the guidebook of how to live in today's world and beyond. Amazing. Um, you know, you pinned a tweet um, in which you talk about the factors that are counter to uh, a longer, healthier life. Smoking, for sure. That's the worst. Yeah, the worst. Alcohol intake. Again, new, new data, data says uh, alcohol is worse than I even thought. Um, so, so if you want your resveratrol, take the pill, not the red wine. Definitely. Okay. Waist size. What? Waist, uh, waist, waist size. size. Yeah, uh, so uh, people who are overweight um, have, a, a, in general, an older epigenetic age than those who stay at a BMI between, uh, say, 21 and 24. So that's a fact. So if you want to age slower, maintain your BMI in what's considered a healthy range. Yeah. Uh, inflammatory uh, CRP levels. Yep, I think it's... Yeah, it's in called inflammation. Inflammation is the underlying killer for so much. It, for sure. For sure, and there are foods that you eat can, that can be inflammatory. Uh, for instance, some of us are, uh, have a reaction to dairy or to certain grains. Be careful about that. You don't want that. Your gut is very important for inflammation. You don't want bacteria getting into your gut, lodging in your bloodstream or in your brain. That can cause these diseases that we all know of. So yeah, keep inflammation low. And one of the best ways to do that is to uh, not just eat well, but also make sure that you're not allergic to things in your environment. And you can do blood tests to make sure that's not happening. <laughs>